Hello guys, my name is Melvin. Welcome to budgeting online tutorial. Uh, we'll be resuming from uh, the chapter 7, I guess, variances where we were before this corona break. And yeah, my name is Melvin. Let's shoot straight to, to our thing. I'll be focusing more on the calculations you know so let's do variances let's start with uh, what are variances as we can see variances are key elements of performance management in which uh, we derive the difference between the flexed results and the actual results you know and we know that obviously if we we spend or if the outcome is less than how much we expected it's gonna be favorable and if it is worse then it's adverse so it's important to be able to calculate the variance explain the meaning and the identify the possible cause of such variances because obviously we can just have a variance without uh, the core reason for that so we'll touch that but we won't want to go more into detail about the the reasons uh i've already forwarded you the notes about the possible reasons for possible cause and reasons for sustainable variances so let's just start with the material variance it actually measures the cost of spending more or less on the actual purchase than the standard allows and the formula is uh, sp minus ap times aq but normally on most of books they say they put it vice versa they say uh, they normally say ap minus sp times aq so as for me i have put it other way around you know i put it other way around because if you put it this way you will have to like convert your answer like if you get the negative answer you have to, to multiply it by uh negative one to be positive but if you put it the way i have put it here the way i've written it here you don't need to change anything just write standard price minus actual price times actual quantity yes so let's check the example then we try to work out the price variance using the this formula here so they're saying the company purchases 2.5 meters of material at a cost of 50.460 making 25.1 units the budget production was 25,000 using 2.5 meters at a cost of 50,000 what is the price variance for the material our formula again mm -hmm. standard price minus actual price times actual quantity so what is our our actual price here our actual price here we, we are given the cost of the purchases therefore we want to take the <coughs> the the total cost which is 50 460 divided by the the meters or the quantity which is 2.7 Therefore, our actual price quarry nearly 18.68888 pounds per meter. Gonna be 18.68888. Uh -huh. And our standard price is gonna be we are given 
the expected cost of 2.5 meters, which is 50,000 pounds divided by 2.5 meters, the expected uh, quantity when I have 20. That was going to be 20 minus 16.8888 multiplied by actual quantity. What is the quantity? Our quantity is 2. Actual quantity is 2.7. 2.7, this one. Where they say the company purchase 2.7 of material at the cost of death, which means it has already purchased. Not it intends to purchase, not what it, it expects to purchase, but it purchased that much. Therefore, it's going to be 2.7. So 20 minus 18.666666. Mm -hmm. It's going to be. So 20 minus 18.6888 equals to 1.31111. Then you multiply by the actual quantity. You know, you need to solve this, this part first here. The one on the brackets first before you multiply by the actual quantity. So this part here, uh, 20 minus 18.6888 is going to be 1.3. When three one one point three one 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 multiply by two point seven. You know, on your calculator, don't round this number here. One point three one one one. Just write it, it write it in full, then uh, multiply it by two point seven. Because if you write one point three one one, it's gonna give you maybe a wrong answer. But in your calculator, try to put it. It's a whole number, the full number. Then you multiply by 2.7. You're going to have a 3540. 3540. Therefore, our variance is favorable. It's favorable. Yes. So that's it. That's a how you do the price variance you can see the actual the actual price was 18.6888 but the expected price was 20 which means we bought or purchased material at a cheaper price than what we expected therefore our variance end up being favorable uh, let's continue let's get into material usage Material usage here, you just compare the standard usage of material for the actual production to the actual usage of material for actual production units at a standard cost or standard price. So, your name is like this, standard quantity minus actual quantity times standard price. Just like that previous one. You know, in the books, they normally write AQ minus SQ times SP. There is the key. SQ is not quantity. AQ is not quantity. And SP is not price. Uh, but this is how they write it in the books. But remember, I say I prefer it written this way, the way I have put it in the, in the slides here. Yeah, so let's try to incorporate figures into this uh, this uh, formula to determine the usage. You remember, usage you, you'll be talking about uh, the quantity used, quantity of something used. The price we're talking about the the price we have in care and purchasing uh, materials. Or yeah. Materials, because in this case we're talking about materials. So here we're going to talk about, we're going to calculate the variance of expected usage of material and the actual usage of material. So we have our example there. They saying, they saying, fresh PLC is a manufacturer of toothpaste 
one of its ingredients is fresh toothpaste. One of the ingredients of fresh toothpaste is sodium fluoride powder. Fresh purchased 10,000 kilos of sodium chloride at a cost of 20,000, which was a uh, two pound per kg, of which it only used nine kg on that period. Therefore, this nine kg is our actual quantity used. Actual quantity used. But you know, they persist how much? 10,000, but they used 9,000, therefore 9,000 becomes our actual quantity. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it's only midnight, guys, we can, as we can see. Half 11. I'm dozing. Then they say, further information includes the following. The standard price of sodium chloride is 1.5 per kg. Standard usage of, of fluoride is 10 grams per toothpaste and fresh they manufactured a million toothpaste during the period what is the material usage all right let's go there let's do our formula our formula is gonna be standard quantity minus actual quantity at standard price so here <coughs> we have an issue here but before we go to that issue let me just put uh, the obvious figures here let me get back to the question uh, we can try to find our Actual quantity is already given there, like I told you, is 9,000. Therefore, actual quantity used is 9,000. Standard price, let's look for it. Our standard price, or the expected price of uh, sodium. Therefore, it's gonna be, or oh, stated here, or restated. Is given it's gonna be 1.5 and be times one point one point five in my pen guys is, is acting up this is one point five right one point five but what is our standard quantity they are saying uh standard usage of toothpaste is 10 grams per toothpaste usage of the sodium chloride therefore um, I think you know how many grams are there in a kilogram you know you need to have uh, 1000 grams in a kilogram kilogram means thousand grams because the word kilo there means thousand therefore uh, one gram equals to zero point one gram equals to zero point zero zero one kg one kg I guess why three zeros here because one gram equals one kg cost thousand grams. That three zeros means that there are thousands. Remember, thousand means there are three zeros. <laughs> Therefore, but they're saying the sodium fluoride uses uh, the fluoride is ten grams per toothpaste. Therefore, because we have zero point zero one, can be zero point zero zero one times 10 grams it's gonna be how much it's gonna be because you multiply by 10 it's gonna kill one zero then it's gonna be zero point zero one 
that are standard usage converted to kg cause here we are using kgs so 10 grams to kgs equals to 0 0.01 kgs then they are saying fluoride standard usage of fluoride is 10 grams per toothpaste therefore how much space do we have made we have actually made 1 million therefore it's going to be 1 million times 0 .0, 0 0.01 it's going to be 1 million times 0 0.01 therefore it's going to be 10,000 therefore that is our standard or expected usage we expect that 1 million toothpaste they're supposed to use 10 thousand uh, kilograms so we have to put that uh, expected usage in our formula therefore it's gonna be here gonna be ten thousand ten thousand minus nine thousand it's gonna be one thousand obviously and one thousand times one point five Gonna be 1.5. Oops, sorry. Gonna be 1.5. Is it favorable or adverse? It's gonna be because we actually use the less than what we expected to use. It means it's gonna be favorable. That's it with uh, the usage variance. You know, uh, this is another method of doing it, but uh, we'll cover that one during the revision because the books use the other method, but I prefer this one. So let me teach you this one so it's, uh, you get familiar with this one because in some questions you'll have to do some uh, incomplete records or incomplete variances of which is, is easy and simpler when we are using this kind of formulas not the ones which are mostly used in your books and uh, yeah that's it with material variance and uh, we also have uh, the total material variance so with total material variance you can just add the the price variance you add it to the usage variance then you're gonna have the total material variance so like i said when we begin there are always some reasons for for variances and here we have some couple of uh, reasons for price variance you know uh, i have tried to highlight the favorable in green and the adverse in red so those are some i don't believe it's all are some of the reasons why we might have the positive variance or favorable variance like uh, decrease in market price obviously when the price which we expected to incur or expected to to be costed at is uh, goes down it means you're going to spend less than what we get therefore it's going to be favorable or purchase of material of lower quality yes purchasing material of, of lower quality means that it's going to be cheaper therefore price is going to be cheaper or better negotiation good suppliers you know maybe discount or something this one negotiation by procurement staff and the discounts large orders is actually the same thing you know uh, and also an uh, implementation of the procurement practices like uh, imitation of price quotation from multiple suppliers you know comparing the sub the, the prices then you choose the the cheaper one and we, we have the reasons for adverse variances adverse price variance you know some of the 
the reason might be an overall hike in the market price of material or in short increase in price prices of the material in the market maybe inflation or something yeah purchase of material of higher quality you know if material of higher quality is used therefore they're going to be less wastage you know therefore it will, it will lead to favorable usage because you're going to lose less you know i don't know if you get the concept but the better the material the lesser the wastage therefore I mean, uh, if we buy high quality material, we're gonna have uh, less less wastage. Therefore, obviously, high quality materials they are bound to have uh, higher prices because we know obviously something which is which is of high quality is expensive, you know. Therefore, buying high quality material will result us in in having even to spend more or costing more than if we were to buy the cheaper quality or losing the discount yeah, obviously if you don't have discount it means you're gonna pay more than you're gonna pay the actual price or you're gonna pay higher prices you know even when our staffs or procurement staffs are not negotiating for discounts or oh, their inefficiency you know just buying without comparing some prices between different suppliers that might lead to paying higher prices therefore and best variance so we have the usage also there we have the usage also there the usage some of the reasons for favorable usage of material is high skilled labor why be, why because the uh, high skilled labor obviously are gonna are gonna like on the process are gonna waste less material than if it was a, an amateur staff or an experienced staff which are bound to make some errors therefore wasting more material but greater skill of labor will lead to less wastage therefore favorable uh, patches of material of higher quality like i was saying before material of higher quality are bound to result into less wastage uh, training and development of workforce you know if you if you you train your workforce it means they are going to be more effective the learning curve they're going to be they're going to get more used to the the process or uh, the procedure of the production therefore they're going to be more effective and efficient there and resulting in less wastage hence favorable variance then we have uh, our reasons for adverse variance obviously they're gonna be vice versa of those which are on top like purchasing material of lower quality it means that they are about is bound to be more wastage you know we see unskilled labor they are bound to make some mistakes like uh let me say we are on a manufacturing business furniture like experienced unexperienced labor or unskilled labor they are they are bound to to miscut some some timber maybe it means instead of cutting 1.5 meters then they make 1.4 meters that way means that uh such 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 item or such 
Romic shell will need to be thrown away because it has been mismeasured. Uh, it has it hasn't been measured out accordingly, you know. Therefore, you have to throw it away and cut the new one or and try to to make it a uh, required size or or length, you know. So unskilled labor are bound to make such mistakes, you know. But with time, with time, they will improve. Yeah, the other one is say increase in material wastage due to depreciation of equipment. Yes, once the material gets older, it becomes less effective. You know, it's just same as. In fact, it's just opposite to labor. Labor, with time, they improve, but with the equipment, with time, they decrease. So. That's it with uh, variances. Let's meet again on the still variances, but uh, talking about labor variances. Goodbye.